All right, look, the answer is creatine monohydrate. When people ask what's the best type of creatine, a lot of people are gonna try and come up with fancy new forms of it to tell you, makes them sound smart, but truthfully, there's just nowhere near as much evidence supporting other forms of creatine as there are the amount of evidence supporting good old fashioned creatine monohydrate. But in this video today, I'm gonna to run through five different types of creatine and the pros and cons that they might confer. Nothing's been shown to be better than creatine monohydrate. However, there is one form of creatine that might confer additional benefits for cardio workouts. And there's one that honestly, I think you should probably avoid at all costs. So let's get started. Now creatine is so effective at improving power output and increasing muscle size that countless supplement companies are trying to come up with new ways to improve upon the original product. It's sort of like how there are a lot of whey proteins where companies decided to add digestive enzymes or like there are pre-workouts, people add ingredients linked to improved focus. With creatine, people usually add salts. So then you get these products like creatine hydrochloride, pH buffered creatine, creatine nitrate, creatine ethyl ester, and a bunch of other ones. And for this video, I've spoken to sports nutritionist and the co-owner of De Novo Supplements, Ben Esco. The guy actually wrote a chapter in a textbook published by the International Society of Sports Nutrition on creatine. So the guy really knows his stuff. So to start off with, let's get into why creatine monohydrate is the best form out there. So creatine is a non-protein amino acid and creatine monohydrate is when it's been attached to a molecule of water. So it's actually like 86-ish percent creatine by weight. If you really want, you can get creatine anhydrous, which is 100% creatine by weight. But that little molecule of water, of course, totally harmless. It's not really taking away from anything. And unlike a lot of supplements out there, which have like a few promising studies attached to it, creatine monohydrate has literally hundreds and hundreds of studies supporting its use as a means to improve power output and increase muscle size. It's one of the most researched performance enhancing ingredients that is naturally derived. There's really nothing that compares in terms of the research base that the ingredient's effective and safe for use, nothing even close to creatine. So all the other supplements we have out there uh, everything else pretty much pales in comparison to the research support we have for, for creatine. People think sometimes creatine is a steroid. People sometimes think creatine is unnatural. It's going to make you gain water weight. Part of the reason that creatine is beneficial is because it acts as an osmolite. So it attracts water to it. That's a good thing because water is, or muscle is primarily water. It's a hydrated tissue. Um, so you want muscle mass to take on more more fluid. Also, that helps protect you from dehydration, um, which is one of the roles of creatine, which most people don't actually acknowledge, is that it's actually beneficial for uh, like heat stress and pr protecting from dehydration. But can we make creatine even better? Let's talk about the most popular alternative to creatine monohydrate, and that is creatine hydrochloride, or HCl. What this is, is creatine bound with parts of a hydrochloride molecule, and what that does is make it more acidic. So why would you want your creatine to be more acidic? The theory goes is that it digests better. A lot of people out there get indigestion, bloating, cramps from creatine monohydrate. And the idea is that hydrochloride digests more easily. Now it's pretty anecdotal, but you can find a lot of reports from people online saying that this does not produce the same sort of indigestion. Again, it's anecdotal. There aren't really studies on this aspect of it, but what we cannot deny is the fact that it does dissolve more easily in water. The undeniable advantage of taking something like creatine, which is not very polar, and making a salt out of it, making it more polar, it will dissolve easier into solution. So something like hydrochloride definitely dissolves easier into solution. So does creatine, creatine citrate. I think there's creatine malate. Most common things that you could make salts of, they've made a creatine ver uh, salt version of it. So. In terms of advantages, that's really the only one that it confers. As, as a formulator, I can understand the, the desire to have something mix clear and not you know, have a precipitate at the bottom. So that, that definitely makes sense. But in terms of functional benefit or performance benefit, the salts haven't proven anything beyond that. Creatine HCl is also less bulky, like hydrochloride has a smaller mass. So you might be able to get away with a smaller serving size. So there are some potential benefits to creatine hydrochloride, but many of them are unproven. And we definitely don't have evidence that it's more effective at improving your power output or muscle size than regular creatine. So what if we go in the other direction? Instead of making the creatine more acidic, we make it more basic. One popular example of a pH buffered creatine is crealkaline creatine, which some say means it might absorb more effectively again. 
But again, we just don't really have evidence supporting that. They haven't been able to back up any of those those claims. Um, I'm pretty sure that's not even a bonded form of creatine. It's going to, it has to pass through both the stomach, which is already a pH of one, um, and then the small intestine, which is, uh, I think, re roughly a pH of seven. So any type of buffer you might attach to any compound, once it hits the stomach, it's either getting neutralized or it's going down to around one. There's no real advantage that you're going to be able to present or validate if you're taking it orally and it has to pass through the stomach. There's really only been one good study on this and it found that crealkaline creatine did not do a better job than creatine monohydrate at increasing muscle creatine content, strength, anaerobic capacity or anything. Now of all these new novel forms of creatine, chelated, malate, citrate, alpha keto, glutarate, there is one form that really does hold some promise and that is creatine nitrate. That's when creatine has been bound with nitrate, which is a signaling molecule made from nitrogen and oxygen. And it is pretty strongly linked to increased production of nitric oxide. If you are a fan of pre-workouts, there's a pretty good chance that you've seen the letters NO on the front of one of them. And this is because nitric oxide, pretty strongly linked to relaxing your blood vessels and pretty reliably, like in quite a lot of studies, that's been seen to improve performance in the aerobic and anaerobic workouts. Nitrate is very high in beets, actually. That's why beets are widely considered one of the best pre-workout foods out there. I do think there has been a recent study with creatine nitrate showing that it did produce, uh, it increased plasma nitrate, so nitrate in the blood. It had some of the benefits that dietary nitrate have in terms of vasodilation and improvements in uh, VO2 max. So I think that's interesting, but again, it's not gonna outperform monohydrate for those very specific performance benefits that creatine will provide. I think the only potential thing you might be able to say for a creatine nitrate that you can't for hydrochloride or anything else is that there is more theoretical benefit to that nitrate portion of the molecule, whereas hydrochloride, you're not gonna get any kind of advantage. So in other words, creatine nitrate does seem to give you the benefits of creatine and nitrate all at the same time. That's not to say they have like a sort of a synergistic effect that it's gonna be a better effect than just taking creatine and nitrate separately. If you wanted to, you could just do that. But if you want to save yourself a little bit of time and effort, yeah, creatine nitrate, pretty promising evidence there, although it's a pretty new form of creatine nonetheless. And I'd like a bit more research there. Finally, I wanted to touch on what might be the worst form of creatine, and that is creatine ethyl ester. Not only has some research shown that it produces less muscle creatine content when compared to regular creatine monohydrate, there's also evidence that it increases the amount of creatinine in the body quite significantly. That's a waste byproduct that the kidneys need to excrete, and you really don't want to have extra creatinine in the body unnecessarily. I, I ha I'm not even aware of if companies are still selling that. If they are, I hope not. Um, but that one is definitely undeniably the worst. Um, it has pretty much no stability in solution. It does degrade very rapidly into creatinine. Um, so you're basically supplementing, supplementing with the waste product of creatine if you're using creatine ethyl ester. So all of these other types of creatine out there, the evidence, if there is evidence, and usually there's not much, the evidence does suggest that they're only about as useful as creatine monohydrate, like not any better. Creatine ethyl ester, on the other hand, it appears to actually be inferior to creatine monohydrate. And by increasing the amount of creatinine in your body unnecessarily, it could actually be bad for you. So that's one I would actually like actively avoid. Although I should make it clear that I am not a doctor or a nephrologist. And if you have concerns about your kidneys, you really should speak to a physician. Okay, so that's my take on the best and worst types of creatine out there. There are actually plenty of other types of creatine out there as well, though. I wrote an article on 10 different types of creatine and their pros and cons. I put that in the description below. And if you want to find out what the best creatine products are on the entire market, I've also done a big roundup on that. So just give that a Google, Barband, best creatine.